then whether the management is conservative or surgical depends on the duration and degree of the disabilities. So surgery is not needed very often. In our population, we think surgery is needed probably two or three percent of the time and no more than that. And oftentimes it's needed if there are, there are structural abnormalities that can't be avoided, such as extra muscles or an anomalous configuration of the clavicle or some such thing as that. Most of the time, if there's enough scapular support, there's enough opening to recover. So this is a short form view of a very simple but highly reliable anatomically based set of circumstances that can be seen by anybody, verified by anybody, and help support the diagnosis. Whether one does imaging or not depends on the intensity and duration of the symptoms, severity, distribution, and the potential need for surgery. In our opinion, in this general area, no one should do surgery until they know what the anatomy is. A venogram, an arteriogram, or some such thing is never sufficient. It does not reveal all the variations in anatomy. Even a brachial plexus neurogram, which gives us a pretty good idea of the shape of the plexus, is usually done only in one position. Now, let me make one other point before we open it up to questions in case there are any. Most of the imaging that's done correctly is done with the patient lying on the back. That means body weight is on the shoulder blades. I just pointed out earlier in this presentation that manual correction of the shoulder blades relieves the symptoms. So while the MRI, MRA, MRV study is the most valuable anatomic object of test we can do, it minimizes the degree of compression because the body is on the back. Now, there is such a thing as an open upright MRI, but it has much too narrow a point of view and the imaging is kind of blurry compared to the closed one. So our habit at least is not to use that form, but to rely on the type that Warden does because it gives us the most accurate view. Okay. 